Hello everyone! Para sa video na to, pag-uusapan natin ang laws or rules of logarithms. Ang una natin ay ang logarithm of a product. Kaya sa tinawag na logarithm of a product, kasi minumultiply natin yung dalawang terms natin, sa m, saka yung n, sa loob ng ating logarithm with a base b. If you have this product, according to this law, pwede natin silang paghiwalayin, and then the operation between them is addition. Starting with our m, This is logarithm, dapat pareho sila ng base na B, nung ating M, and then plus yung ating pangalawang term na N, also with the same base nung ating B. Tapos pwede rin siyang pabalik kapag meron tayong logarithms with the same base, say B, pwede nating silang pagsamahin as long as yung operation between them is addition, and then kukunin natin yung products nung nasa loob, which is our M and N here, gagawin natin yung products nila. Para mas maintindihan natin siya, let us use this example. We have logarithm of base 5 nung ating 8 plus logarithm of base 5 also nung ating 3. Ang una muna nating titignan, dapat pareho sila ng base para ma-perform natin yung ating loss of logarithm. In this case, pareho naman silang base 5 kaya okay na tayo. Kapag tinignan natin yung ating logarithm of a product, ang gagawin natin is simplification or i-condense natin siya mula dito sa addition papunta dito sa ating products kasi magkahiwalay yung ating dalawang logarithms. Kaya ang mangyayari, yung ating m ay yung terms na nasa loob ng ating logarithm. Yung una natin, this is just 8. Tapos yung n naman natin ay yung nasa loob ng ating pangalawang logarithm which is just 3. By applying the logarithm of a product, pwede nating silang pagsamahin kasi the operation between them is addition. Kukunin lang natin yung products ng terms natin na nasa loob which is 8 and 3. Kaya this is equal to logarithm, same base pa rin tayo na 5. Tapos kukunin natin yung ating 8 and then yung ating 3. Kukunin natin yung products nila. So this can be simplified as our 8 and then times 3. And then we perform our operation. This is equal to logarithm ng ating base 5. Tapos 8 times 3, this is just equal to 24. Kaya yung ating logarithm with base 5 ng ating 8, plus logarithm of base 5 nung ating 3, that is just equal to logarithm of base 5 of 24. This is the process kung paano natin i-apply yung ating logarithm of a product para mas masimplify natin yung sums nung ating dalawang logarithms. Now let us have another example. We have logarithm of x plus logarithm of x plus 1. Isisimplify lang natin to, same, the operation between them is addition, And then they share the same base. Kasi kung titignan natin yung ating given, this is our common logarithm. Kapag ka walang nakalagay na base, automatic, ang default natin is logarithm with base 10. Kaya kung titignan natin yung ating given, pareho silang walang base na naka-indicate, kaya they are both base 10. With this, we can apply yung ating logarithm of a product, yung ating unang term, ang ating m is x, tapos ang n naman natin, yung ating pangalawang term is just equal to x plus 1. Then, we get their products. This is equal to logarithm. Yung ating unang term na x, kukunin natin, imumultiply natin siya dun sa ating pangalawa, which is x plus 1. Kaya ito ay magiging logarithm of x times x plus 1. If you want to expand, pwede rin naman, pwede natin imultiply yung ating x kay x na nandito, tsaka kay 1. So, this is equal to logarithm of x times x is just x squared. And then x times 1 is x, kaya this is x squared plus x. Yung ating given na logarithm of x plus logarithm of x plus 1 can be simplified into this form. We have our logarithm of x squared plus x. Again, as a reminder, pwede lang natin itong gawin kapag pareho yung base ng ating logarithm and then the operation between them is addition. Kasi for our second law, when it comes to our logarithm, ang concern naman natin ay logarithm of a quotient. Kapag given tayo ng ating dalawang terms na nasa loob ng ating logarithm, we have m over n, pwede natin siyang expand as logarithm with the same base b, tapos kukunin natin yung term, our m, na nasa numerator, and then we will be using our operation of subtraction kapag quotient tayo. And then isusubtract natin siya dun sa nasa denominator naman natin using the same base b ng ating n. Again, pwede natin expand yung quotient ng ating logarithm By getting the logarithm of our numerator m with the same base, tapos isusubtract natin yung ating logarithm ng ating denominator using our same base pa rin na b. 
In the same way, sa ating logarithm of a product, pwede rin natin ibalik yung terms natin mula sa difference ng ating dalawang logarithms papunta dito sa ating quotient. So with this said, i-apply na natin siya dito sa ating example. We have logarithm of base 3 ng ating 8 minus logarithm of base 3 ng ating 2. Pabalik ulit tayo since our operation is subtraction and then concern tayo ng ating dalawang logarithms. Kukunin lang natin yung ating unang term na 8. Siya yung ating numerator. And then ang denominator naman natin ay yung ating second term na 2. Siya yung ilalagay natin dito. So we can simplify this as our logarithm. Pareho pa rin yung base, base 3. And then yung nasa numerator natin is our first term 8 over yung pangalawa natin na 2 ang nasa denominator. Kaya ito ay magiging 8 over 2. Then we simplify this is equal to logarithm of base 3. 8 divided by 2, this is simply 4. Kaya by applying our logarithm of a quotient, our logarithm of base 3 of 8 minus logarithm of base 3 of 2, this is just equal to the logarithm base 3 of 4. Kaya kung makapansin natin sa ating logarithm of a product tsaka logarithm of a quotient, ang crucial lang ay yung operation between our logarithms. If they share the same base, B, kapag addition, multiply lang natin yung ating M and N, pero kapag ka-subtraction naman in this case, we will be dividing yung ating unang term na M divided by yung ating pangalawang term na N. Madali lang naman i-apply yung ating laws or rules. Now, let us proceed with our next example. We have ln of x squared minus 1 minus ln of x minus 1. Etong ln na to, this is our natural logarithm. Ang katumbas lang nito is logarithm also na ang base natin ay e. We're in this e. This is Euler's number. This is equivalent to approximately 2.72 kapag nag-round off tayo to two decimal places. Kaya yung dalawang ln natin dito, logarithms lang sila with the same base which is just equal to e. That is 2.72. Kaya with that said, we can apply yung ating logarithm of a quotient kasi the operation between them is subtraction and they share the same base. Kaya ang gagawin natin dito, this is equal to ln, logarithm of base e, tapos kunin natin yung unang term na x squared minus 1, siya yung numerator, over yung ating pangalawang term na x minus 1, siya naman yung ating denominator. So this is just equal to ln of x squared minus 1 over denominator is x minus 1. You may stop here pero kaya pa nating isimplify yung ating nasa loob. Kasi yung nasa numerator natin, this is difference of two squares. Yung ating x squared minus 1 na nasa numerator, this is also equal to x squared minus 1 squared. Tapos kapag inapply natin yung ating concept sa algebra, yung difference of two squares can be expanded to x minus 1 times x plus 1. Where kinuha lang natin yung products nung sum and difference nung nasa baba natin nung ating x at 1. Kaya tayo nakarating dito sa x minus 1 times x plus 1. I-expand natin yung ating numerator. This is equal to ln. Tapos yung ating x squared minus 1 na nasa numerator will become x minus 1 times x plus 1. Tapos wala pa rin tayong ginalaw sa ating denominator. So this is still x minus 1. Ang kagandahan lang na nangyari dito is meron tayong x minus 1 sa numerator and then meron din tayong x minus 1 sa ating denominator. Since the operation between our numerator is multiplication, pwede tayong mag-perform ng ating division. Kaya x minus 1 divided by x minus 1, if we divide same terms, ang sagot lang natin ay 1, kaya ang matitira lang ay yung ating x plus 1. Kaya this will become ln of just x plus 1. Yung ating given na ln of x squared minus 1, minus ln of x minus 1, we were able to simplify it to our answer which is ln of x plus 1. This is it for our logarithm of a quotient. Pwede na tayong tumuloy sa ating pangatlong law or rules of logarithm which is logarithm of a power. Masimple lang siya kasi kapag given tayo ng logarithm of certain term m tapos nakaray siya sa certain exponent na x, ang pwede natin gawin yung ating exponent pwede natin siyang ibaba at i-multiply dun sa ating logarithm. Kagaya na nangyari dito, napunta dito sa x times yung ating logarithm of m. Nawala na exponent na x dun sa m na kinukuha na natin ng logarithm. And then pwede rin yung pabalik kapag given tayo ng x tapos nakamultiply siya sa certain logarithm, pwede nating ilagay yung x as exponent ng ating term which is m. Now let us apply this dito sa ating example given tayo ng 3 logarithm of 2. 
applying logarithm of a power, meron tayong 3 na nakamultiply sa certain logarithm, eto yung form niya, pwede nating ilagay etong 3 as exponent nung nasa loob nung ating logarithm. Kaya this is equal to logarithm of 2, tapos yung 3 natin na nasa unahan, pwede natin siyang gawing exponent nung ating 2. Kaya this is logarithm of 2 raised to 3. And then kapag minultiply natin yung ating 2 by itself 3 times, 2 raised to 3, that is just equal to 8. Kaya this is logarithm of 8. Kaya yung ating given na 3 logarithm of 2, this is also equal to logarithm of 8. Ganito lang gamitin yung ating logarithm of a power. Kapag ka meron tayong certain number, tapos nakamultiply sa ating logarithm, pwede natin siyang gawing exponent nung terms natin na nasa loob. Kaya tayo nakarating dito sa 2 raised to 3. With this, we were able to discuss yung tatlong laws or rules natin sa logarithm at kung paano sila magamit to simplify logarithmic expressions. Hello everyone! I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa'yo itong video na to, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!